Welcome back to News Geelong as we move into the world of Geelong sport with Mitch Scoop Cleary. Thanks, Rollo. First up tonight in sport, we go out to the Geelong Racing Club to speak to development manager John Dunn for all the action from Friday's race meeting on the synthetic track. A busy afternoon on the synthetic here, launching Gambling Awareness Week. In the opening event, Newman Lumen. Well, he's been a professional place getter all throughout his career. He was widely tipped to break through here this afternoon, but try as he may, he found one better in the form of I'm a soldier in the opening event. He was too, and they were followed by Newman Lumen, who's running on down the outside with Mystic Thunder. I'm a soldier, led 100 to go. Newman Lumen closes within about a length. I'm a soldier in front. Newman Lumen, he might run second again. I'm a soldier in front and hangs on. Greystone and Rosetalenko enjoyed a battle royal all the way up the home straight, but unfortunately for punters, it was Greystone who prevailed in race number four. Greystone wider out, then Miss Articulate at the 250. Are Sharv and Reese Alenko and Greystone. Greystone and Reese Alenko took the lead together. They'll battle it out. Greystone just with his head in front. Reese Alenko not digging deep enough here. Greystone's got his measure. Greystone went on to beat Reese Alenko. By the Mark Riley train gallop a gold indeed. He earned the title as the shortest price favourite of the day to win. And win he may when Damien Thornton kicked well clear on the home stern and he bolted in. A straight though, Gold indeed in front, wants to lay in on top of the fence. Ryder goes to the left hand for the whip, but it's three in front. Of in second spot, Stambra, Mr Bandit Country, then Bernardi. Gold indeed in front though, over the final stages. He's holding a three length margin and Gold indeed far too good for them there. Punters finished the day on a winning note when the heavily backed King Cotton saluted in the final event. Informed jockey Jackie Berryman, Allowed the favourite to cruise up behind the leaders on the home turn, pulled out and scored a big win to finish off the day well for the punters. In the straight, it's Baclacia, Sandusky City and King Cotton drives to those two quickly. Two lengths to Hugh and Cry, repeatment and exceed and excite, but King Cotton hit the front. A hundred to go. He's got this one. Sandusky City, Hugh and Cry there for the miners. Cross Street working home, but King Cotton, he loves this surface. And that's the wrap-up of racing here, synthetic afternoon style on a and of course we're on again this coming friday so from a chilly geelong it's back to you in a nice warm studio mitch thanks jd now we speak to new tenant to our fullback alan johnson who kept st joseph's russell robertson to one goal en route to the eagles claiming their win over the joeys in the battle of autumn street we have been talking to Warrnambool players for weeks now. They've come into this new town at Chilwell side and really made their presence felt. And here's another one. You've played a mighty game today against that former AFL champion in Russell Robertson, keeping him to just one goal. Yeah, cheers, mate. Yeah, a few of the boys came down this year and we're fitting in nicely. So hopefully we can keep our spot in the senior squad and, yeah, have a good year. Well, you've certainly uh, made a contribution that is very significant. And now I'm sure that... Uh, Newtown with three on the trot have found their rhythm after a bit of a sluggish start to the season. Yeah, getting a few boys back from injuries and um, yeah, full squad so hopefully we can keep the chop going. Now when you played for South Warrnambool, were you a defender there? Yeah, I was uh, usually... The sec, oh, I took the second main forward and Matty Sully who's come with us, he used to take the main forward so we're sort of stuck together and having a good year so far. Well you certainly are and uh, if you keep this form going you'll be a permanent member of this uh, new, this much vaunted new tell Chilwell side. Yeah, nah, it should be good. So. Well, we spoke to Sandy Robinson a few weeks ago and he's also, he, I think he's a fa he was a farm boy. What background did you have down there in Warrnambool? Oh, I was just, just in the city mate, no farming for me, <laughs> that's about it. And uh, you came to this club as a result of uh, your mates coming up here as well? Yeah, yeah. bit of a change, come up, try and um, try some, play some better footy and yeah. Well do you find playing at this level here, this local league, Geelong Football League, is uh, improving the standard for all of you? Yeah, I think, oh, well, it's a better um, standard of footy so we're trying to play as good as footy as we can and yeah, hopefully we can yeah, keep going. Although the, the Hamden League you came from, yeah, I mean, they're, they're no slouches yeah. either, are they, really? They... Yeah, it's a very good league as well, so, yeah. Well, you could come under the radar. What age are you? Ah, uh, 22. Right, so, well, these days, a mature <laughs> age, a rookie, but uh, you've certainly uh, made your presence felt and a terrific game today. What did you think about coming into this match after Russell Robertson had kicked 10 goals last yeah. week? Oh, 
they sort of sat down and talked to me and just like said stick to him like all the boys helped me out so it made the job a bit easier like every time we led there was someone in front of him so the boys really helped me out so yeah he certainly didn't look like a guy, a guy that kicked 10 goals the week before. You managed to block him out very carefully, uh, very, I would say very cleverly today. Yeah, yeah no, it was good. Oh, I just played in front of him and just, yeah, just blocked his run, really. Yeah, well, it was a fantastic effort and uh, I'm sure that uh, the coach, Jacob Spalding, will be very pleased with the boys tonight. Yeah, he was and, happy. Yeah, I'll bet he was. And, of course, you've had some key players also uh, missing with injuries, so... Yeah. Uh, you can only look forward to a, a brighter yes. future from here on in. <laughs> Hopefully we keep going. Thanks, Alan. Now we're out to the Geelong Greyhound Racing Club for all the action from Friday night's race meeting. First up, race six, the Beckley Centre Group 5 final with the winner, Jimmy Two Hats. Racing in the final, perfect line out showing speed. Jimmy Two Hats crosses what will be early and away fast. Blake the Snake, Blake the Snake, Jimmy Two Hats lead out of the straight, getting off the track. What will be takes Lecture Ice with it. They're checked out the back with Star Rashad. Into the back straight now, and Jimmy Two Hats kicked away. Three or four in front of Blake the Snake, the second, followed by Out of Ink. Further back in the race, What will be's had no luck, followed then uh, further back by Mystery Diamond getting up on the rails. Well back, Star Rashad with Lecture Ice, one of the last, and Mr. Boo in the straight though. And Jimmy Two Hats is clear. Jimmy Two Hats wins four or five and here's race nine with the winner entry bail ready at the 460 away they go what an innings jumped about a half length behind them early entry bail won the start and going forward betsy and also bravo to the first corner just behind them there was uh, what an innings trying to squeeze through but just check uh, back through the field now was north storm shiraz reef is uh, also well back coming up to the turn though and nicely clear as they swing for home uh, going right off the track was entry bail it's about three in front though balances up once more now and kicks away and entry bail back down to the rails now we speak to thompson's luke forbes as he helped the Tigers to their fifth win of the season from as many matches over East Geelong on Saturday. One of the stars of Thompson's big win here at Richmond Crescent this afternoon was uh, Lucas Forbes. Lucas, great game. Yeah, no, it was good, mate. Pretty windy, pretty hard conditions, but um, no, it was good to get the four points. And I guess uh, the performance by Thompson over four quarters was what counted today. You sort of, you're in the game early, they got back at quarter time, but from then on, you seem to have control. Yeah, no, we had a pretty, we got a, had a pretty big pre-season with um, my brother doing the fitness. He's a personal trainer, and all the boys are pretty fit, so we thought we'd run it out well, as we've been doing in the last quarters, and which is a good sign. Now they tell me you kicked ten goals, ten last week, in, in with limited opposition. Six goals straight today. Have the right boots on today. Yeah, I had the right boots on today. I think it was. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I had the yips last week, but as long as we're getting the four points and I'm doing my job, so that's the main thing. And the thing that impressed me, it gives you an opportunity up forward when the ball comes up so quickly. They're very smooth through the field with foot and hand, makes it better for a forward. Yeah, oh, definitely. Um, a lot of the boys are pushing up and leaving a bit of space, so no, it's working well. Me and um, Brendan McLeod changing on the ball, so it seems to be going well, and as long as we're winning, it's the main thing. And, and the cooperation between players seems to be extremely good. Everyone seems to know where his mate is and uh, the handball goes to position pretty well. Somebody said, you know, you're prepared to handball through a gap if it's there. Yeah, oh, definitely. The first option's there. We've got to give it. And um, Spuddy, Spuddy Hall and the coach is drilling it into us. So as long as we all do the right thing, you know, it all, all plans out good. So a very good start to the season. I, I hope you're able to keep it, keep it going. Yeah, not a problem, mate. One week at a time, but uh, we're on the right track. Thank you, Mitch. And now for all the weather expected for Geelong and the Surf Coast over the next six days, let's look at the week ahead. Tomorrow, Thursday, we'll see partly cloudy conditions with a top of 18. Friday will continue to be partly cloudy with isolated showers on the Surf Coast during the evening with a top of 19. Starting off another weekend of autumn in May, Saturday will be partly cloudy with isolated showers and a top of 17. Then on Sunday, it will be partly cloudy with a chance of showers and a top of 16. Monday will return to sunny conditions with a top of 17. Tuesday will see sunny periods with partly cloudy conditions and a top of 16. Today around Geelong and the surf coast, we saw early fog patches this morning, followed by a partly cloudy day with a top of 18 this afternoon. And that's the weather outlook for Geelong and the surf coast. Thank you for joining us on News Geelong. To all of the Leopold football and netball teams, well done on a great start to the season, but a big test this weekend against South Barwon at all levels. So remember, 
take your time and smell the flowers. From all the team at News Geelong, enjoy the rest of the evening and a very good night.